Hi, I'm Terry Smith, the Technical Manager at the Australian Access Federation. Welcome to part two of the IDP upgrade series. In this presentation we will discuss the strategy and planning for upgrading your IDP. Upgrading your Shibboleth IDP version 2 to version 3 is not a trivial task. It will require planning and communications to ensure your users are not adversely affected. The AAF have been working to reduce the risk and effort involved in installing and upgrading to version 3. To this end, we have created an installer that simplifies the technical component of upgrading and developed and tested an upgrade path to assist in a smooth transition from your current version. Why do we need to upgrade? As IT professionals, you should all know the reasons for regularly upgrading your software. I'll quickly go through this list to reinforce the reasons for upgrading as they relate to your IDP. Firstly, developers of Shibboleth have announced the end of life date for Shibboleth version 2. It is the 31st of July 2016. After this date, there will be no more support or patches for bugs or security issues for version 2. If you are still running version 2 after this date, you will be on your own. No more support. Next is improved security, which helps to reduce the risk of your software being involved in a breach that could result in the loss of users' personal data, compromises of users' accounts and access, through to the potential loss of reputation for your organisation. Beyond protecting yourself, newer software brings new features that may improve the user's experience, reduce the technical effort, and potentially provide an advantage to those organisations that are early to adopt. Finally, using the AAF installer will ensure all future upgrades are much simpler. Before you begin, make sure you know what's involved in up the upgrade process by reviewing all of these videos and the available documentation. Make sure you set aside enough time to do the upgrade and you have everything and everyone you need prepared and ready to go. The basic strategy is to build a new IDP using the AF IDP installer. Test it, make some changes and retest. Continue changing and testing until you are ready for release to your users. In the next few slides we will look at each of these points in a little more detail. To minimise downtime we want to build and test the new IDP while the old continues to operate. The new IDP will be built on a new server. It will use the same host name as the old one. We will modify the configuration based on configuration and data held in your old IDP. And finally, add the new IDP certificates to the metadata so it can function in the Federation. To have both the new and old IDPs functioning simultaneously using the same DNS name requires a bit of DNS magic. While testing, the DNS entry for your IDP in your DNS server will point to the old IDP. The computer from where you will test will have an entry in its local etc. host file for the new IDP. So when you are testing from your test computer, all redirects to the IDP will be to the new one, while other users can, will continue to use your old IDP. After your IDP is fully configured and tested, it is time to make it generally available. This is as simple as changing the DNS entry on your DNS server. You should have the time to live or TTL set fairly small in case you need to roll back. You should also schedule this time to occur during your maintenance window. Users who are logged in to Federation services during the transition may have to re-log in. After the upgrade, your new IDP will have the U approved component installed and configured. If you have not used U approved previously, your users will have a consent to release attribute step added to their login workflow. If you have used U approved before, all users will have to re consent as the new consent engine provides more functionality, making it impossible to migrate previous consent choices. Planning and communications are essential when upgrading your IDP. You should consider the following when planning and deploying your communication strategy. The state of your current test environment. Time to get a new server provisioned. Time taken for firewall rules to be approved. Changes to DNS. Who is responsible? What is the process? Other activities that may be occurring that may affect the upgrade. 
and the stakeholder groups that may be involved, such as your change management board, your support desk and your end users. So, how long should your upgrade take? The simple answer is less than a day, but there are always things that you don't have control over, such as the server creation, DNS changes, firewall changes, how long your change management board takes to make a decision, and when your maintenance windows occur. These things and others that you may be aware of need to be factored in. Now that you have a strategy, in place and you know who you need to communicate with to ensure success of the upgrade, it's time to get started. In the next presentation, we will get your server prepared for installing your new IDP.